We're practicing phase alignment at home with Nathan Lively from Sound Design Live, coming up next. Leave a like, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and visit dcsoundup.com for tons more pro audio and production information. Links in the video description to Nathan's channel as well. If you haven't found Nathan and Sound Design Live online yet, I think you're going to really enjoy this episode. I really like watching his videos, especially the ones where he gets viewers to send in data from their measurements and their sound systems, and then he walks through how to understand and work with what you're looking at. This one today is a great example of how instead of making things more complex, Nathan works really hard to explain a ton of the surrounding concepts as he goes, uh, giving you the connecting links to put the theory into practice without feeling overwhelmed by everything you're looking at. The other thing you'll find in this video and on a lot of videos on Nathan's channel is he is a really big advocate of practicing and learning and working with the tools that you have. And I love that. The viewer who sent in the data that Nathan is looking at in this video was working at home with a set of studio monitors and a micro sub and getting some really valuable experience from it. Practicing at home when there's no pressure is a really great way to build your confidence. And Nathan has a phase alignment workshop actually coming up on Sunday, March 14th, that's going to be aimed at all skill levels. I've put a link down below so you can get tickets if you'd like to be involved with that. Check out his channel. It's linked below as well after you've watched the video and definitely check out his podcast. There's a whole bunch of new podcasts out this year and it's hard to tell who's who and who's got the experience and Nathan's got some great guests. He does some really interesting interviews and some very informational stuff. So definitely check that out. It's all linked below sound design live. Now let's jump over to Nathan and see what he's got going on with these measurements. Uh, hey, so last week I made this Facebook post and I sent out an email and I invited you to send me your measurements so that we could talk about alignment and, and I could, you know, uh, try to give you some feedback and maybe um, uh, just see what we could learn from each other. And Larnas sent me their measurements. So um, I'm going to try to hold up my end of the agreement and, and give a little feedback here. So Larnas uh, sent me some photos at first and I said, okay, the photos are kind of helpful, but what I really need are the original measurements. So they sent me their TRF files and um, I'm not sure why exactly they came through like this. It's weird for me that they look kind of like uh, missing some data here. Because if we look at the you know threshold here, there's no coherence. So I don't know if there's something weird about um, the way the files came through. Um, but anyway, this is what we've got, a main and sub measurement. And at first you might, oops. At first you might look at this subtrace and you think, oh, these aren't really on top of each other and they're not aligned. But in the email from Laurinus, they said, well, uh, I think these are aligned and um, I tried a bunch of different settings, but it never got better. And I created this um, sum trace, and it looks like they're getting summation to the crossover region. And I said, huh, this doesn't make sense. Why would everything be working fine if these phase traces are not on top of each other? So the first thing I did is I went to the info panel here to see what was going on with these measurements. And um, so there's two things I noticed here. So I think this is the top, and I'll just make a screenshot. And this is the sub. So here's the main, and then here's the sub over here. So let's just look at these settings. Okay, these all match. Um, I'm, I wonder why the averaging says none. Uh, I would always set this to something higher, by the way. Uh, polar, you know, I, I would normally use complex, but that's fine. Windowing, this is kind of weird for me. I've never seen windowing none. Mine always say something like windowing Han. And I don't know if I can open it right now. So I'll close this for a second. It's under uh, these settings over here. There's the averaging type, um, data window Han. I think that's where that is. So I don't think I've ever turned that off. So you probably want to turn that back on. Okay, um, windowing and then delay. Check this out. The delay is not the same. So this is why these are not on top of each other. And yet they seem to have summation through the crossover region. So this is not a huge problem. We can fix this. 
um, as I talked about in a recent video. So, you know, we can play around with uh, the level offset here, but in terms of timing, we, we can't really adjust that. So the, what I did is export these. So just select both of these, export to ASCII, and then I open them up in Room EQ Wizard. So file, import, import frequency response, top. I wonder if I can do them both at the same time. Maybe not. Open top, file, import, import frequency response, open sub, Okay, so we've got these in here. It's just like we were looking at in Smart. And um, the first thing we need to do, though, is correct this timing offset. And here's the timings that we had over in Smart. Oh, I closed the windows, but um, anyway, our... Actually, I don't remember what these are, so I have to open them up again. So let's look at the... Did I close the other thing already? I did. So the sub is the one that is too far, right? So what we're going to need to do is change the timing reference and add 6.39 milliseconds to the timing reference of the top. So let's do that first. So I'll just copy this and go back over to Room EQ Wizard, select the top, controls, offset T0, and I'll just paste this number in. And now when I hit enter, what I expect to see it do is go up, right? The 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 slanting down uh, slope here, the slope should get less steep because normally we add delay and we think the slope is going to become more steep, but I'm adding delay to the timing reference, so it should go in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna watch the slope right here. Okay, it went way up here, right? It took this big shot up. So now I'm going to apply and close, so we'll write the data. Now let's look at the phase. And it looks like I'm already quite zoomed in here. So um, I already did unwrap phase on this window. And so now I'm going to do fit to data. And I really only want to see down here in the low end. Oh, no, I didn't do unwrap phase yet because I just re-imported these, right? Cool, so now I'm going to unwrap the face because this is a little bit hard to look at, right? It's bouncing around, uh, the, the data is noisy. So let's see if this will work. Unwrap face, and now what I can do is just sort of right click and drag down to kind of this area of interest, which is about like 68 to 200. How do I know that that's the crossover region? Because over here in all SBL, let's do this as well. We will fit data. And then we'll just look at the low end. Actually, let's just go back to seeing the entire trace here. So to find the crossover region uh, quickly in Room EQ Wizard, I will go to Measurement Actions. And I'll just pick one of these. It doesn't really matter. But first, I will turn it up by 10 dB and see the last frequency where they still touch. I'm assuming this is all noise. So this is going to be about 68 hertz. And then I'll go minus 10 dB from zero look at the last place where they still cross over. So let's say that their crossover region goes from about 68 to 200 hertz. Oh, and I didn't show you guys a picture yet, but um, Larna sent me a picture of the setup. It's this super cute little um, practice rig that they set up at home. So let me grab the photo. Here's the photo. Look at how cool that looks. Uh, I love this little setup. Look at these tiny little speakers here. Okay. So that's how I knew that I wanted to look at 68 to 200. And... Okay, so looking at this, it looks like they're aligned already. Now that I have fixed that offset, remember, here's where we started. Over here in Smart, I was looking at these and I was like, hey, this isn't correct. But then I looked at the timing, uh, the delay locator setting, and saw that they didn't match. And over here in Rumi Q Wizard, I fixed it. So now the delay locators match. So now they're synchronized, at least the original measurements. And look, they're right on top of each other. So at this point, I, I think we can say, okay, he was right. They're aligned. Uh, so there's nothing else you need to do. But if you wanted to investigate this further, 
and um, just confirm that this really is the best setting, it is fun to play around with the alignment tool. So let's move this out of the way for a second. Let's set up our limits here. So we want to look at this, and that screwed everything up because it's way too high. So I think this should be like, what, 18 to minus 18? There we go. Okay, so um, it looks like I already, let me reset everything, reset everything. Okay, so um, I have to pick my two traces and then the black trace shows the summation and the black trace down here shows the average of the phase. So as you can see, I'm already doing pretty well. Um, we can click here and click on level phase at cursor just to maybe make the phase a little bit easier to look at. There we go. Now we can see it all kind of in one stretch here. So it looks like if we do want to make a slight bit improvement, we could add a tiny bit of delay to make this green trace bend down a little bit and get a little bit closer up here, but we know it's going to get worse here. But if I click on delay and just add a tiny bit, you know, maybe we can find a nice middle ground here and I can kind of see this black trace improving at the same time, right? And with measurements that are this noisy, I'm not sure if any of the, you know, automatic optimizers are really going to help us, but I can try it. I can click here and click align face slopes at cursor. Oh, that actually worked. Align face slopes at cursor. I mean, it's not the value that I really want, but it, at least it's working. It's kind of cool. I can also try align phase at cursor. Um, and I can try aligned phase at cursor. So th this is giving me some results. Um, and if I wanted to take a look at these, then I would click align some, and that would make a bunch of copies. But I'm actually less interested in the, the automatic optimizations this time because I already know that I'm so close. So I'm just going to reset this, put this back at zero, and I'm going to try a couple of options manually. So I add a little bit of delay. I click align some. Now I want to try the inverted option and reset this. And I might go this way. I don't think that's it because it's too far apart up here. So let me go the other direction. There we go. I think this is maybe going to be it. So this is not as good, obviously, because the black trace here is not above the blue trace, the most recent um, one, the align sum I created, but I'm going to click align sum. So now I have two options and I can hide my two original measurements and just get really picky about looking at, you know, these two solutions I made. And, um, what I see is better summation here in blue, here in blue, um, so I would go with the blue one, and that's good because that's less work on my part. It's only one millisecond of delay and no polarity inversion, and that would be my pre-alignment delay that I could now memorize or, or write down somewhere. So that's how I would look at this alignment, Lornis. I hope this helps, and uh, let me know if you have any questions about this. Thanks.